Welcome to the Concentric Home Solution Woodworking Channel. If you're new to the channel, I would like to invite you to subscribe, like, and leave a comment. If you're a regular, I would like to thank you for being a subscriber. In this video, I would like to start my initial review of the Cam Master Stinger 2 that I purchased. I, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna do it in a two part. It's gonna be a two part series because I wanna be absolutely fair. The first part is gonna be buying experience, and the second part is gonna be on the actual performance of the machine because I haven't had enough time using the machine, making cuts and so forth, verifying tolerances and so forth for me to give a fair, you know, opinion on the machine. I'm not even gonna beat around the bush. <laughs> My buying experience, in a nutshell, was awful. It started off good. I thought it was going to be a great experience, but it went off the rails. In my initial video about this product, you saw that I explained that it was a long time dream of mine. I've always been into some type of machine control, I at least have interest in it. And the first time I saw a CNC machine was at a local woodworking show. It was a shop bot, to be exact. When I seen it, I knew right then I, I had to have one of these. Entry-level industrial machine, that's what I wanted. But I didn't think I had the space for, well, I knew I didn't have the space for a four by eight machine in the shop. So I decided, okay, it's gonna have to be a tabletop. But if I'm gonna get a tabletop, I wanted something with, you know, with girth, something, something tough, something durable. May not be as fast as an industrial machine, but I want it to be comparable to an industrial machine. I had a weird interaction with my first choice. When I was looking at the two quotes, there was components that appeared to be exactly the same. And one of those components was the JTEC laser. Literally the exact same laser. The other company was almost a thousand dollars more. I sold myself the first machine and I sold myself the upgrades. None of it was suggested to me. I, I literally, I was my own salesperson, okay? So I went from the small desktop machine and I decided to get the bigger uh, 36 by 48 machine. It's, I could make space for it. I could create space for it. I could make this work. Being the type of person I am, always checking and always double checking. Dotting I's and crossing T's, cause I am so, I mean, this is a good and a bad thing, but I'm so paranoid about making a costly mistake. So I'm double checking. So I call up the sales guy and I ask him if he could come over and take a look at my space to make sure that what I'm, the machine I'm trying to get is gonna be able to fit in my space. And, and the gentleman was good about it. He came out, he looked at the space, he measured the space with me and everything, and he said, yep, it can fit. The other thing I wanted to do is, I wanted to come out to the factory. The gentleman said, that's not a problem. You could come out to the factory. And I told him, you know, I'm gonna have my best friend come out with me, not a problem. We went out to the factory. And it was great. They well put together. They had all the Haas machines and everything. It was very impressive in my opinion. And start talking about production time. He told me seven weeks. So, so once I get him a check, seven weeks later, I should have a machine. Okay. At the time he was telling me if I had gotten him that, a check that week, I would have the machine before Christmas. So this was like a week or two later, uh, I got the check to him. But I'm, I'm going through some of this documentation. 
This was, a, this was not even told to me. I had to inquire this information. I had to ask if they offer anything else that, you know, that I might be, he think I might be interested in to, to let me know about. And he told me about the um, servo motors. So I, I was like, yep, I want that. How much is the servo motors? Give me that and let me see if I could fit it into my budget. Okay. Give me the quote with the servo motors. Now, in the basic specs, this is the one line detail it gives about the stepper motor. Standard three axis dual drive on Y. High definition NEMA 34 1100 ounce digital stepper drive system. Okay? So I know something about the stepper. The servo upgrade <laughs> just says this. This is this is the description of the 995 upgrade. That's on top of it's not a subtraction, it's not a it's not a swap. This is an additional 995 on top of the price of the stepper motor for that would give you a machine with servo motors. This is the description for the servo motors. Servo upgrade for Stinger 2 and Stinger 3. Servo upgrade for Sing Stinger 2 and Stinger 3. That's the description. That didn't sit well with me. And I told him that I need the specification for the servo motors. The, you didn't give any specification for the servo motors. And there was some hesitancy. And um, I don't know if this is a term used here, but growing up, we use the term beating around the bush. There was some beating around the bush getting me this information. I do not know why they were hiding it the information for the servo motor but it, they wasn't readily giving out that information matter of fact nowhere in the website ever gave any information for this particular servo package so after some going back and forth i finally you know basically put my foot down and in an email i said you know i i, I can't go forward i need to get that information so i can make an informed decision on buying the machine and then before I could give them the check. Finally, specs for the motor were sent to me. And I got the specs. Wait, before I even go there. I said I need to know the specs. I need to know stuff like the torque rating and so forth like that. And the gentleman tell me, oh, stepper and stovos are not the same. Sovos are not rated in, in by the torque, it's rated by the watts and so forth like that. I said, that's fine. I just need the specification. Anyway, I knew the manufacturer for the Sovo motor that he was offering. It's Technics. And as I'm talking to you, something just popped into my head. I want to bring this up. I made a mistake. He did not offer up that information about the stepper motor, about the servo motor. It's at the factory store, I saw the Technic servo motors on a machine similar to mine's, and I asked about it. So even to the servo motor upgrade, I was the one that had to inquire about it. So I was wrong earlier. So now, here we are, he's telling me he can't give me torque information because servo motors are not rated in torque. Well, I'm thinking to myself, but they do have specifications, right? Well, I mean, why can't you give me the specifications? So finally, he sends me an email and tells me this is the closest servo motor specification to the one that they use on my machine that Technics offer because Technic makes a, cu a custom motor specifically for their application. Long story short, 
the information that I was given was for the wrong motor and I, I made a purchase decision based on bad, informa <laughs> bad information. The information I saw on the servo motor was significantly specced higher than the, the motor that I, I got on my machine. So that was one problem. The other problem is when I went up for the initial orientation, which was the day of delivery, was supposed to be the day of delivery, machine ended up not getting delivered that day. Uh, the gentleman, the tech support guy, is going over the machine and basic control and so forth with me. And I'm looking at the gantry and it was bugging me. Just looking at it visually, more, it looked bigger than what we had measured for. <laughs> Just looking at the machine, it looked bigger. So I, I told the guy, wait, stop one second, because I was completely tuned out. He was talking and showing me stuff, and my mind was elsewhere. I was like, stop for a second. I had a tape measure on me. I took off the tape, and I measured the, the gantry, and my heart just sunk. The machine was like nine plus inches longer, wider, I should say, wider than the specifications. And that nine plus inches, no way. I couldn't move my table saw any further away. I could, in other words, it was not going to fit in the shop. <laughs> okay. So now I'm like, what are we going to do? They had to modify the machine. They had to cut the gantry. And I had to lose the operation on one tool over the lathe. And they made concessions. I will say that. I mean, they made concessions for that. But it was just a series of bad experiences. And the whole thing with the motor not being as specified, I didn't find that out until after I had the machine. And because of all of these weird stuff that had happened, it spooked me to the point that one morning I went out and got the information on the server motor and went on a Technics um, website and found out one, that was a standard part by Technics that anybody could go and buy. It was not some custom special motor and it was not the motor that was specified. I don't understand how, why it had to be this way. Um, I don't think any customer should have had to go through what I had to go through, but the, the part that really bothered me is, despite everything I told them, I went out there to the factory several times because I explained to them that all of this was going to be documented for my YouTube channel. So you would have think that alone would have caused a company, you know, to bring out their A game. I personally believe the servo mis uh, situation was not a mistake. I'll tell you why I say that, why I, I feel that way. The gentleman never wanted to give the information. The information was never even offered and I think still to this day is not up on the website, uh, at least not for the last time I checked. I don't get that. You have an option, an upgrade, on why you're not listing it. And, why you, and when you put it on a quote, why you're not putting the specifications for it? Why are you selling something and you're not going to give the specifications for it so your customer can make an informed decision? Anyway, let's continue. I got the machine. It's delivered. I'm excited. This is my dream. And instead of doing an unboxing, thank God I didn't do an unboxing. <laughs> instead of doing an unboxing, I'm so excited. 
once I got it in here, I start taking off the shrink wrap. Everything looks perfect, by the way. Under the shrink wrap, everything looks perfect. I am a happy camper. Despite everything that happened, I am so happy. I finally got my dream machine. I started looking on the inside. I was like, are you kidding me? Blue painter's tape. Dust on everything. Grease. Parts, the stone on top of parts, you can see in a, in a picture. And, and it's a, and a part that really bothered me. And I'm not trying to bash the company, by the way. And I'm, I'm hoping that everything that we went through together and this video is going to motivate them to do better. Because, I mean, you look at the machine. I'll show you the pictures of the machine. The machine is a premium machine. It's a beautiful machine, the frame, everything. And, and, and I'm like, I'm, if you're buying a, a Mercedes Benz, you know, you don't expect to buy a brand new Mercedes Benz with coffee stains on the seat and stuff, the litter thrown around and, you know, basically treat it like, it, like, like it's trash. I didn't get that. I understand that you have to take the stuff out, the computer and so forth, for testing. But that stuff could be cleaned. That stuff could be well packaged and presented. This is a premium product. This is not a 6000 And I wouldn't even expect that from a $6,000 machine, much less one that costing almost $25,000. So anyway. They had to make concessions for the stepper motor because basically I felt like I was misinformed. That's putting it nicely. I made a purchase decision and I had documentation showing that I asked for specific information prior to making a purchase. And the information that was given to me was incorrect. So concessions was made for that but my thing is you shouldn't have to go through any of that and as i told you guys that is a part and separate from the quality of the machine we will get into that when i get to start making parts on it and i look and see how the parts come out i have no i'm, I'm not going to hang myself but i'm hoping based on from what I'm seeing, based on as far as what I'm seeing about the machine and my little time with the machine, I think I'm going to be okay. But still, I mean, that, it, it wasn't a good look, especially for an American company. Y'all know, you heard what I've said about that. Y'all know how I feel about that. I'll give a thorough evaluation as far as the quality. Other things too, I would like to suggest to the manufacturer. And again, I, I can't stress this enough. This, this is tough love, no malice. I actually want them to do well. There are families that work for this company. And not everybody that work at this company was responsible for my bad experience. I want to be clear about that. Things I would like to see change. The packaging, the quality of the packaging, no blue tape, painter's tape. The, after testing, the computers could be cleaned off. I had a thousand dollar laser that was sitting in a box with collets and so forth like that loose in there, could damage it. It was just wrapped in a styrofoam, completely unnecessary. All of this I did myself. I print out the manual for the controller and had it bound. For almost $25,000, I should have gotten something like this. All of this is in PDF. I know people is into this PDF type stuff now, but let me tell you something. It's very hard to read on a screen, right? And you may not necessarily want to go out 
into a shop with an iPad that you could drop and so forth like that. And you might, may want to have documentation at hand when you're working on your machine. I shouldn't have done uh, do this. For this price, this, the PDF still should have been included, but this should have been included. Same thing with the documentation for the laser. I, I did this. This is for the um, the CAD CAM program. I, I did all of this. And <laughs> shout out to my old school, <laughs> Gwinnett Tech. I, I got this three ring binder and I have other stuff that I had from them that I I put in a three ring binder to have at hand. And, and these, this is not expensive to do. This, this is what I don't understand. This is like little, small efforts that would, you know, take the company up a notch, impress a customer. Because, I mean, when it's all said and done, when you do stuff like this, you get high praises. There's a thing called, you know, execution, fit and finish, presentation. All these things matter. All of these things matter. I'm going to show you pictures of the casters. Not the casters, sorry. The um, leveling feet. Why the leveling feet was not included with the machine? I, I don't get that. It's going in the garage. I know it's been a while since I've been active in actual construction. So my game might be a little bit off, but I'm pretty sure there's not a vapor barrier under the slab on the garage. I know on the inside of the house, certainly is. Six mil. In the garage, I'm pretty sure there probably isn't one, right? And you have steel sitting on a bare ground. That, and a garage is not level. It should have come with the leveling feet. I paid $120 to my house for these leveling feet. It's not like it was thousands of dollars. $120. Why that was not included? That makes no sense to me. The other thing too is the lathe. Now, I will admit, I did miss that. It's in the description that it doesn't include a chuck. But... There's a reason why I missed that. Who sells a lathe without a chuck? To me, that's like selling a car without tires. And if you see the chuck I bought to put on the lathe, it looks tailor-made for this 10-inch capacity. It also has, take it back. It has the location for the set screw. So you can use the, the lathe in reverse and not, you know, have the, the chuck come loose. I said that because even a chuck company, when I was purchasing a chuck, in, in the picture, they show it with a set screws, but it didn't come with it. I had to purchase it myself. I, I don't know what's going on these days, but $220, why that wasn't included? I, I, I don't get it. I don't understand. This To me, this is like, you know what you call an unforced error? Not including a chuck is an unforced error. Not including leveling feet is an unforced error. The packaging, unforced error. So please, 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 please. Anybody out there at Cam Master that's listening to me, the owner, whoever, please. I sure y'all gonna get a way better rate than me because y'all gonna buy it in quantity. The leveling feet. The Stinger One came with it. Why, why the upgrade don't come with it? 
the Stinger 2, all of your machines should come with leveling feet. That should be a standard. And if you're selling a lathe, it should come with a chuck. And it should come with the right chuck. The chuck for that, with the capabilities of doing reverse. So this is like what I'm talking about. One degree. And for my sales experience, sometimes it's not even a salesperson fault. I think, I don't know how this could be resolved because I think the whole concept of sales encourages bad behavior in my opinion. You're selling some stuff $15,000. You're selling some stuff that $80,000. And sometimes they look at a little guy like me. They're trying to get me out of the way so they could scurry on to the bigger job. The $60,000, $80,000 job. I cannot imagine somebody paying $60,000, $80,000 would have that type of experience. I can't imagine it. You know how expensive of a mistake that would be? I can't imagine. A good talk need to be had with a salesperson. What you practice is what you do. So if you're cutting corners here, eventually it's going to show up in the 80000 or the 60000 or the 40000 because you get so used to it, it becomes second nature. You have a premium Cadillac, treat it as such and respect that customer as such. For some people, twenty twenty five thousand dollars is a lot of money. Anyway, guys, this was my review of my sales experience with Cam Master. It, it, it took some prodding, but in the end, they did the right thing. Thank you and have a good day. Be safe out there. If you enjoyed this video and you would like to be notified when new content is dropped on this channel, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification, and drop a comment down below.